Welcome to Wrap It Up. My name is Nonka Zimulogindi. This is the channel that gives you a wrap up of all those top or trending stories of the week, locally, nationally and internationally, while giving you, the viewer, the chance to express your feelings and opinions in the comment section below. Because you know what? We love to hear from you as the Wrap It Up team. And that is a true story. In the meantime, please like this video, share it and subscribe to my channel. Time is precious and I don't want to waste yours. Let's get into the first story that trended. It is of the Tembisa residents saying that the deadly aftermath of the service delivery protests that took place earlier in the week was unnecessary. This after four people passed away during these protests and a couple of government facilities were damaged. The Agurleni mayor, Tanya Campbell, was saying that uh, she's going to try her best to address the issues that are facing the area and she made some commitments among them which I remember it is the tariff hike issue, the water crisis as well as the electricity billing issue and the residents gave her some time with her team to fulfill these commitments. The next trend was of the DNA results stemming from the Kruger Stop gang rape that occurred last week. We do know that more than 80 illegal miners were arrested in connection with the rape. However, the samples revealed that none of these people arrested match or reveal the real culprits. However, they are now in court for being in the country illegally. But if you ask me, this seems like a case that's going to take place for a very long time. Because remember, these ladies were raped by more than one man, which means... They're going to be mixed samples. It only takes a very good forensic team to be able to work with mixed samples or rather mixed samples and actually get to the bottom of who the real culprits are. We can only hope for the best in this case. The next trend was of the Capitec Bank app being offline for more than a day. Two days to be precise. Listen, if you are using Capitec Bank as your main account, I would suggest or rather advise that you reconsider that because, I mean, it is really bad what happened during the week. Imagine with the payments and the transfers that needed to be made. Let's not even go to debit orders. So I'm a Capitec user and I was like, thank God it's not my main account. Otherwise, yo, it would have whipped me. It would have whipped me. The next trend is of the Cajiso residents removing illegal miners in the area. They blockaded every entrance with burning tires, with stones, uh, with uh, rocks. It was just chaotic. I don't know if you saw the pictures. It was so traumatic. Some of these uh, miners, they were stripped naked. Some of them were bleeding. You could tell that they were injured. You know, it looks like, you know, the residents actually beat them up. It was really terrible. Then the following day, they ran off to Mansiville. And the Cajiso residents actually said that after they kicked them out, they ran to Mansiville and they went to Mansiville and they actually blockaded the main entrance with burning tires. But it was not as severe as it was in Cajiso. And that is a developing story that I will bring you updates on. Then the ESCOM utility, it actually extended stage two load shading right through to Sunday due to lost generation capacity in over three power stations. The next trend is of the Labour Court in Johannesburg postponing the contempt order application against NUMSA and two of its top leaders. Uh, it postponed it to the 19th of August. So this after, uh, you know, the union actually held its 11th National Congress regardless of the Labour Court order that barred them from doing so. So this is also another developing story that I'll bring you updates on, especially after the 19th of August. August. Then there was the untimely or rather sudden resignation of the KZN Premier Sihle Zikalala saying that he's resigning on the basis of the narrative that has been formed against or rather around his name you know uh, with, with, with people saying that he has been non-supportive of the former president Jacob Zuma and is aligning with the current president Cyril Ramaphosa and okay, there was a briefing in which he actually defended his position, saying that he did support the former president. Look, you know what? At the end of the day, this is the name of the game. In politics, there's always a brush that you are painted with. Whether he would have resigned or not, the same narrative was still going to stick around his name. That's just my opinion. What is yours? 
Then when it comes to sports news, Team SA Swimmers, they arrived back in the country. They were welcomed very warmly at Oar Tambo International Airport, welcomed by friends, by family, as well as teammates after successful Commonwealth Games. And congratulations to them for each of their achievements. Then last but not least was the horrific flash floods that are hitting the U.S., uh, specifically in the Western Kentucky area, where hundreds of people are still accounted for. This, according to the governor, Andy Burner, you know, and the National Weather Service also said that there will be slow moving thunderstorms uh, and showers that are going to provoke more flash floods until Tuesday. The good thing is that um, the president, Joe Biden, and the first lady are going to be visiting the area. They're going to survey the area where these floods have damaged and you know um, they're also going to meet those that have been affected by these floods it's definitely a developing story that i will bring you more updates on at the end of the week thank you so much for tuning in this is wrap it up once again please remember to like this episode to share it and to subscribe to this channel and i will see you at the end of the week shop shop